What's going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about overclocking your cards as well as undervolting them. Now before we go ahead and jump into it, I do want to warn you and let you know that everyone's cards are different. So what I do will not work for you perfectly and what you do won't work for me identically, but we can at least try to get close and play the game. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have going on. So we're going to go into our farm. As I said, I'm a new miner as well. I am learning as we go, and I'm just trying to share the information that I've learned along the way. So we're currently mining, mining Kapow. Now, keep in mind, your overclock settings and configurations for Kapow will be different than uh, when you look at um, Ethereum hash rate uh, and for their algorithm. So Ethereum versus Ravencoin. The cards will be overclocked and underclocked differently to give you guys an idea Ravencoin actually requires more power to go ahead and mine with. So right now I'm at 585 watts mining Ravencoin. It will be significantly less if I go ahead and move over to Ethereum, which is significantly more efficient. Keep that in mind. This does apply, you know, across the board with anything that you guys do mine. So it is not only the card that matters, but it is also the algorithm or what you are mining that matters. So here is my current configuration. I've gone ahead and made a snippet of this so I don't lose it because I find it works well. I am gonna go ahead and clear all of this and start from zero to show you guys how I got to this point and the process that I recommend that you do. So first off, let's take a look. We're right around 13 to 14 mega hash a card right now with our overclock and under volt configuration. Let's go ahead and go in here and let's gut it. Um, actually what I can do is do it right here under overclock. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead here and we're going to go ahead and just clear this sucker out. Okay. And we're going to save it. Okay. So once that is saved, we'll give it a second here and it's updating my worker. So as you can see up here under AMDOC, it is sending that out to it directly. And to actually make this as clean as possible, I'm gonna go ahead and actually delete my entire configuration. So we got nothing, we got nothing. Um, so this is on the default config. And if we go into the default config, you can see we have nothing in there. Okay, great. So we're going to go back to overview. Let's give it a minute here. We're going to see significantly higher. We're at 594 right now. Just wait until we just wait until we get in here uh, and you get to see what the stock wattage is uh, as well as some of these numbers. So I'm going to give it a minute. It is rebooting. And when it comes back up, we'll take a look. Alrighty, guys. So we are back. We have gone ahead and rebooted. Um, we do actually have shell in a box up and we can go ahead and see some of our hash rates. So we're getting, you know, we're now down to 6944 versus before we were up between 80 and 84. Uh, you can see some of our hash rates, 12s, um, 11s, even an eight over here out of the, the 570. So nothing spectacular. Uh, if we go ahead and refresh our Hive OS page, you can kind of see the stock settings are not great. And then take a look down here at our wattage. Our wattage currently is at 790. Holy cow. Look at that here. 100 plus 128 on our watts, 145, 130. So these watts are through the roof for the usage here. So here's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to go ahead and click overclocking at the top. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to uh, create a new template. So you're just going to click the box right here on the right. And now we're going to go ahead and select what we're mining, uh, which is Kapow, um, which you can see here, which is Ravencoin. And now we have the option to go ahead and set up exactly our configuration here. Now, I'm not just going to go ahead and throw in my configuration that I know works well. Let's work through this together at a high level and figure this out together. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is bring up, we have two different types of cards. We have 470 4 gig cards, and then we have 570 4 gig cards. So taking a look here, our core clock is 1140, boosting up to 1236. 
So that gives us an idea as to our range and availability. As well as if you scroll down, you can see your effective memory clock is 1750. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with our four gig cards first. So if we go back and take a look at our page here, slot zero, slot one, slot zero, two, three, four, and five are all 470s. Slot one is the 570. Man, look at the temps going everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to adjust this. So we're going to come in to our overclocking. And first thing I'm going to do, we talked about here, copying this. We're going to go down to our Raven coin again. Perfect. Is let's go ahead and uh, first let's get our fans going here. So we're going to set our fans. Now I'm going to do this six times, each one to represent a slot. So this first one is zero, then one, two, three, four, five. Let's just save that. Okay, let's get these fan these cards running a little bit cooler. Just so as you can see up top here, they're 74 degrees in red. That's Celsius, guys. Not even Fahrenheit. Look at that. You might be able to hear it in the background. My fans going ahead and powering up. So they are at 100% on the actual cards themselves. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back in and we're going to hit edit. Okay, so on our new egg page, we were seeing 1140. So there's a few areas that you can start. What you could do is you could come in under popular presets and now these and then what you can do is select your card rx470 and our memory size is four so what we're going to do is you could start out here so let's so take a look this first setting the cardinality is 54 so that's pretty high there that means you know a decent amount of people have used this setting so let's go ahead and select that 1100 and 1950 okay so what that's going to do is that's recommending the core to be 1100 and the memory to be 1950 and you could hit add actually right over here so i'm actually going to add it six times because we have well there's six times but we need to make the changes for the 572 so this this one slot here okay so we haven't touched anything yet other than that so let's go over to the 570 card and on the 570 we can go ahead and take a look at our boost clock is 1340. So that gives us the high and our effective memory clock is 1750. So if we come back over here, let's look at our pre our popular presets again, look at the 570 and it's 1100 by 1950 as well. So if we go back over here, they're almost identical, which is awesome. So let's leave everything the way it is. We're just trying this out for the first time and let's save this. So all we've done is put in a popular preset of a very modest, uh, not super aggressive. We've done nothing with undervolting yet, which is right here. All we've done is just slap some, um, some core clocks and some memory clocks in here to get us started. And we've boosted our fans to cool things down. So as you can see up top here, look at our temperature differences have started to come down, which is awesome. Let's go back to our overview here. And we'll refresh that. And in the meantime, uh, okay, it looks like everything has gone over. Let's jump over to our shell in a box. And let's wait for this to update here. Awesome. So take a look here. Our last time before our configuration there, we were at 11, 6, 8, 12, 12, 12, and 11 at 69 mega hash. Now, with just that change, we've almost gone up 10 mega hash. 13, 12, 13, 13, 13, 12. So we're at 78 now, mega hash. Now we're still at the wattage that we were before. Look at that, 779. So if you're looking, like you don't want your cards running at those wattages, you will, you will be deemed to have one die on you. So let's get this in a little bit better state, uh, a little bit better of a situation. So what we're going to do next is, is we're going to go back in here and we need to start to read through some of these things. So here's a good, great one at the bottom. Okay. This is the refresh rate, also known as RX boost for RX cards, advised values 20. Well, we're using all RX cards. So let's set that in here six times. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and save this. It doesn't mean that this is going to do anything crazy yet, but this at least lets us know, okay, 
we're we're on our oh there's a, a an error there let's go back in let's do that again there we go sorry mechanical keyboard so let's save that okay so now you can see up top here it's applying it amd oc and it's going to go ahead and apply it to our cards we're going to see any value to that but we're going to need this um as time goes on so now once we've configured that what I like to do is look at our fans. So all of our fans are at 100%, but look at our differences in temperature based off of where your GPUs are. The goal is really to have your fans working the least amount as possible and, and where you want to have them at. So we're going to change this up. So I'm going to cut my fans back here. It's probably about 60%. But the second one in, look at that. It's 47. It's in a, It has great airflow. I'm going to cut that down to something like 30%. So that means... We're going to take this and go 60, 30, 60, 60, 60. One more time, 60. There we go. And we're going to apply that. So you're going to hear my fans come down now. Plus, it helps with recording quite a bit. So that's going to go ahead and apply. So all you can hear that. Wow, it's got so much quieter. Doesn't need to sound like a jet engine. So now we're going to jump back in. So taking a look here, let's look at memory state. So reading through this, we can see here. This is a very advanced parameter. Try this if there is a problem with undervolting. If it works, don't change this. So we're going to come back to this here, okay? But it does say RX cards, which is what we're using, are known to have one or two memory states. So you're just selecting the memory state. The highest state will be selected by default. So that means um, that is the highest possible. Cards may fail to undervolt on the highest state. So, that, uh, so like, for example, the highest is two. So right now we're at two. Thus, if undervolting, you would want this at one. So we're going to set that to one. Okay. Now we're going to come up here. We're not going to make any changes to our memory control voltage. But jumping up uh, from there, let's take a look at two items here. Our core state and our core voltage. So our core state. Another great information here. For RX cards, it's, it's a value from one to seven. So this is the dynamic power management. So these numbers, this one and two stuff, this is the undervolting side, guys. So we've already put some basic settings in for our core clock and our memory. But under core state, let's go ahead and set that to one. And now under core voltage, let's take a look here. So this is telling us that um, you can set values like five, uh, 900. So, okay, we're going to start with 900. That's the that's the amount of volts, not not converted to watts, but the amount of volts that we're going to try. So let's go over this overall. We're at 1100 across the board for core clock. We're at 1950 across the board for memory clock. We've set our core state to one and our mem state to one. So overclock's been addressed. We're now getting into undervolting core state and core voltage and memory state. So let's go ahead and apply this save. OK. So right now we're at 779. Remember that number for our wattage. Alrighty, so we've given it a minute. Let's go ahead and refresh here. And let's wait for this to go ahead and finish loading up. We've gone ahead and set our settings there. So our wattage has gone down a tiny bit, which is fine. We're stable. This is where we start to tweak. So we've just gotten to a point of stability right now which is key. And if you make a setting change that the system doesn't like, it's going to reboot on you. It hasn't yet on me. It may very well in this video. So let's talk about it a little bit. So now what we need to do is our goal is to make changes to our core clock and our memory clock in order of keeping our hash rate high or where it is now, but lowering down our volts or our watts. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to change this to 890. I've left everything exactly where it is. Now, I'm going to test this out. Let's see what happens. So it's applying. And we'll see where it goes. Alrighty, so we, we made some impact, but nothing crazy. So let's get into it and let's take a little bit closer of a look. So instead of doing 890, let's take this and branch out across the board to our six our six slots like we talked about previously. Uh, now what we're going to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and I want to bump up. This is the 570. I'm going to bump it to 1150. And then I'm going to increase 
my my because my my 570 i'm sorry not 750 our 570 when we looked at those stats in the beginning it, it had uh higher numbers and and thresholds uh as well as if we looked into the popular presets this number could be a little bit higher so if we can boost our memory clock and our core clock but still keep our power low i think we'll be in a good spot so let's go ahead here but i'm giving it more memory and more clock speed so i'm going to keep it at 890 but then these guys these are the 470s i'm going to take them a little bit lower and i recommend you guys do the same thing just even if it's five at a time just just take it from 880 to 875 just a little bit at a time a little bit at a time is what you need now down here aggressive underclocking we're going to select this set oc for each dpm state we're going to have that selected you need that for your undervolting let's go ahead and apply it so we made some big changes there on our our, our dpm uh, with our vdd as well let's see where we come out at here so we have decent core clock we have good memory clocks at this point. We've we've that's for our overclocking. You know, we went from what eight, nine, ten, eleven ish to up to thirteen now plus on our mega hash with our overclocks, which were the core clock and the memory. But now we're trying to adjust our our undervolt. We want to see our wattage consumption be significantly less. Alrighty, so we gave that a little bit of time to apply. You can see we're getting 82 mega hash right now, and we're at 13. Look at that. Here's 14.2 now. Is that 570? Those changes we made, we bumped it to 1150 in 2050. Now it's pushing over 14, and then these other ones are right around 13. So if we jump back, take a look. We're at 597 right now. Where do we start at, guys? 791, 799. And look at our wattages. This one was up over 140. We're now down to 117. And look at these, all sub 100. So we were able to get these down to 875 right now without a crash yet. We haven't seen it crash. It hasn't rebooted. And we're in a good spot. So what I recommend you guys do is continue this process. The more you can undervolt, the more performance you can add to your core clock and your memory clock. So we could continue to take this down a tiny bit at a time and bump our core clock and our memory clock a tiny bit up at a time until the system reboots. You will get a Team Red Miner reboot or whatever miner you're using and the system will literally reboot and you go, okay, I need to take a step back now. So guys, this was a short video. I guess it was short, maybe 10 minutes now, going over overclocking and undervolting and kind of how this process works in a brief description if this was helpful to you as a beginner miner please go ahead and give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below tell me where you guys were when you started and where you are now what, what was your mega hash difference and what was your wattage difference i'd love to know finally if you guys do enjoy these videos and guides please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys next time